We're here today because the number of us have written an email to Siobhan Belly and asked her office for a meeting about the Climate and Ecological Emergency Bill and we've been told that there are no appointments available and so we've come here, we're having a cup of tea here and we're inviting Siobhan to come and meet with us, have a cup of tea with us, bring her own flask and at the moment uh, the idea is that we're going to be here every Friday 12 till 2 and we'll also talk to the passers-by about why this bill is vitally important to our future, the global futures, that this bill becomes an act of parliament. We have a climate emergency, nobody's talked about it. It's something that we need to sit down do together and talk about because it's really important. If we're going to be out on the street talking to the public, why don't we get the tea trolley and the tea cosy and make it look attractive and make it inviting so that it's something ordinary and something that everybody can come and find out about. government have brought in uh, their target of net zero carbon emissions by 2050, that's quite patently too late and they're not on track to even do that anyway. Um, so this is a bill that's recognising that and showing that it's, we need much more ambitious targets and we need to do something much more quickly. So what the bill does, it, it, um, it plugs some of the holes in the 2008 Climate Change Act. It actually makes sure that the United Kingdom takes account of its entire carbon footprint. So at the moment, we say we're responsible for the emissions from the UK, territorial emissions. Uh, but what we have to do is we have to take account for the emissions that are embedded in the goods that we import and also emissions in aviation and shipping. We need a carbon budget, which is commensurate with 1.5 degrees, but that carbon budget cannot include the magic of negative emission technologies that do not exist. It also looks at our impact on the wider environment and says the government has to take account of that in its supply lines and has to act to improve um, the environmental conditions and to use uh, natural uh, sequestration technologies to embed carbon. So it's actually using the natural world to, to improve the environment. The way that this is done so that we don't end up in a cultural war and people not accepting the radical change that is needed is that we use a citizens' assembly and the citizens have a say in what policies are needed to, to meet these targets and understand why these targets are needed. We need a proper sense of leadership in this country where we actually account for our carbon emissions and are aware of the long supply chains of all the products that we use and not live in this fantasy that denies our, our real impacts. The environmental movement has often been about compromise, particularly on targets. It's not a compromise issue. It's not the economy or the environment or even the health service or the environment or equality or the environment. Actually, the environment is about life on Earth. This whole movement has been going for 40 years and we have 60% more CO2 emissions sitting underneath the greenhouse. You know, it's not working. Really uh, renowned experts in, in, in their field have come on board and they've helped us to draft the bill. So the requirements of the bill are really, are really based in the science of what's needed, not what's politically credible or what might fly uh, as a political policy, but this is the real heavyweight science because you know, we know physics doesn't negotiate. We now have to do what's needed and that's what the Climate and Ecological Bill contains. Whatever happens, our lives are going to change radically. So either we can make that change better or we accept a really grim future. And we think we need to act to make it better.